and today we are going to be going over the differences between brokers and lenders. There is a vast difference and I want to make sure that you understand exactly how to tell the difference when you're speaking with a broker versus a lender. Hello, my name is Edwin Epperson. I'm with Blue Bay Capital and we are helping real estate investors like yourself make wiser, more informed decisions. So here's today's conversation topics. We're gonna have, be going over real briefly the three tiered system. We're gonna go over what a broker is, a lender is, an investor, the difference between the three, and broker advantages and lender advantages. So these are what we're gonna be talking about today. I'm gonna to try to keep this underneath 20 minutes. Uh, we'll quick, fast, down and dirty. So let's get started. The three tiers. Well, here's the first tier is the investor. The investor, when we say investor, we're talking about the capital provider. Uh, whether that could be institutional, whether it could be a company, whether it could be an individual, it doesn't matter. The investor is the one who is, has the capital, which is giving you the loan. Second is the lender. A lender is the person or entity that is underwriting. They are making sure that the loan request from you as the real estate investor meets the capital investor's requirements, okay? So the lender is the person who is actually doing the underwriting. They are the one that's doing the processing, things like that. Next, you have a broker. Now, a broker plays many roles. They are out there networking. They are generating the leads. They are the ones that are probably what you see advertising and getting in social media groups saying, hey, uh, we loan this, we loan that. Just know that the broker is actually working for a lender. And, and more importantly, they probably have a lot of different lenders that they're working with. So those are your three tiers that we want to cover in today's uh, conversation. So first off, let's start off looking at the broker, okay? Now, a broker is typically independent. Uh, they may be by themselves, uh, especially if it's a non-broker state you know, where they reside and there's no requirement to be licensed, as well as the, the type of loans or the states where the loans that they're giving does not require a license, then they may be independent. Or they could actually work for a company uh, that is brokering, but normally they're independent. Also, a broker has many connections. They have a lot of different options. So if you're speaking with the broker, more than likely, they have a lot of different lenders that they're working with or capital providers that can present a lot of different loan options to you as a real estate investor to help you work through a specific scenario. Also be aware that the broker will add their fee on top of the lender. These are typically what you call broker points. So a broker's points or broker's fee will be added on top of the lender. So there is an additional cost to working through a broker. Also know that the broker is not the decision maker. They have the guidelines. They have what the lender, you know, all the different lenders that they are connected with. They have each of their underwriting guidelines, their limitations, their capabilities. They should know very intimately what a lender can and cannot do, what they're willing to do. But just know that at the end of the day, the broker does not make the decision whether that loan is a go or no go. Also, depending on the state and the loan type and the borrower type, the broker may or may not be required to be licensed. You should understand your state or the state that your assets are in. Let, let's be very specific here. Depending on where your assets are located, does that state require a broker's license or not? So that is something you will definitely want to make sure because you don't want to be dealing with a broker who's not licensed. They're trying to broker a loan in a state that requires a license and they're not licensed. If anything goes wrong, guess what? You have no recourse whatsoever um, and that broker could just walk away. Now you can sue them, but if that broker is representing to be able to broker in a state that requires a license and they don't have a license, they are technically brokering, uh, breaking the law and you should not be dealing with a broker that should have a license uh, to broker money in a state and they don't. All right, and then last, uh, their interest, a broker's interest is one and one only. That is to close loans. Let's be honest, a broker doesn't care if you don't have the ability to close on that loan properly. A broker's, they are not looking out for your business or your best interest. They have one goal in mind, and that is to close loans. So just know that if you're working with the broker, 
Um, their ability or desire to really steer you clear of a bad project uh, is probably going to be cloaked or hidden underneath the desire to get closed. Because let's be frank, once the loan closes, the broker is no longer connected with that loan. It is out of the broker's hands and they're moving on to generate new business. So that's not the case with every broker. I promise you there are good brokers out there, but just know that many brokers are simply looking to close loans and that's their only interest. So you need to be aware of that. Now, let's take a look at the lender. What does the lender look like? So typically a lender is a company unless it's a private lender. And when I mean a private lender, I'm talking about an individual that is loaning their own money from a retirement account or their own cash, right? So we're not talking about somebody who's building a business. Uh, typically it is a, a, a company, but it could also be an individual. Uh, typically when you're working directly with the lender, they have fewer loan options. They've only got the loan options that they can fund in house. A lender does not, you know, if a lender's focus is let's say single family fix and flip, and you come to them and you're looking for a 30 year loan uh, for your multifamily unit, uh, the lender may not be able to provide any options for you. So just be aware that when you're working directly with the lender, your options as far as loan options are going to be reduced because they're only going to be offering what they can fund and what they're comfortable funding. Know this though, that the lender, if you're working directly with the lender, you're working with the direct access to capital. That means they are the decision maker. When you're working with that uh, lender and they say, yes, we can fund this deal, you will be able to fund that deal. There's not going to be an aha gotcha in the case that you're working with the broker who may not fully understand or maybe is inexperienced in brokering loans. And all of a sudden you get down to a few days from closing and the broker says, oh, I'm sorry, uh, the, the investor had backed out. No, the investor they had didn't back out. It was the fact that they didn't collect the proper documentation or they didn't do a thorough enough job in gathering the information for their investor. So just be aware that when you're dealing with the lender, you are dealing with the decision maker. Big difference. Also, depending on the state, the loan type and the borrower type, a lender may or may not be required to be licensed. So you should definitely understand in the state that your assets are located in, that you're looking to borrow, that is the lender required to be licensed, and if they are, are they licensed for that state? Also understand this, a lender's, yes, they make money when they close a deal, but they will not close a deal just to make money. They will close a deal as long as they can protect their downside. They want to protect the deal. That's why working directly with the lender gives you the benefit that you know that lender is going to be protecting that deal. They want to make sure that you're successful as well as they are successful. Now, let's talk about the investor. So the investor, again, when we say the investor, we're talking about the capital provider, okay? So here's what the investor looks like. It could be an individual or it could be a company. Again, the investor is whatever has the money, whoever has the money. They are looking to mitigate risk mitigated investments. So they are looking for investments to where they can mitigate their risk. They are also passive investors seeking passive income. There is a difference. Uh, you know, we hear a lot of people saying, well, I want to get invested in real estate because I'm looking for passive income. And so I'm going to hold real estate rentals. Owning rentals is not being a passive investor. <laughs> it's quite opposite. It's being an active investor. Uh, so just know that the capital investors that are looking to fund or make loans, and they are the investor, the capital source, they are passively looking to earn passive income. Also know that the investor more than likely uh, is not building a relationship directly with you, the real estate investor. That can be the case. You know, if you go to these networking events and you're meeting people that have self-directed IRAs or some type of retirement account, you can build that relationship directly with the investor, which is what we call in the industry, the goose that laid the golden egg. But more than likely, the investor is looking for a third party to invest through or with. That's why they reach out to brokers. That's why they reach out to lenders. They want somebody who's got the systems set up. They've got the systems in place to help guide them in making the best decision possible. So just understand that many of your investors are actually working through brokers 
and or lenders. And if you reach an investor, they may say, oh yeah, that's perfect. Here's my broker's information. Here's my lender's information. Just reach out to them. That lets you know as a real estate investor that it's their capital, but they work with that third party, that broker or lender. So how can you tell? What is the telltale sign between a broker and a lender? That's always the question, right? I see this all the time on groups. You know, people are always asking, well, how do you know if you're dealing with the broker or lender? It's so hard. So here's some just real quick down and dirty, uh, how to tell if you're dealing with the broker or if you're dealing with the lender. Here's the easiest way, simply ask, are they direct lender? If they're not a direct lender, then that immediately lets you know that they're a broker. If they are a direct lender, you know that you're dealing with the lender. Unfortunately, in this industry, you can ask a broker, are they a direct lender? And the broker is going to, in their mind, justify, yes, I, I directly broker the money, therefore I'm a direct lender. Uh, so you have to do some digging, you have to do some research. Um, understand this, 99% of the time, if they're out on some type of social media platform and they're quote unquote advertising, they're putting themselves out as, hey, I'm, I'm loaning money for real estate investors, more than likely uh, they are a broker. Uh, a lender will normally work directly with brokers or they have their own, what we call loan originators, okay? You can see if their company is nationally recognizable, i.e. Kogo, Civic, RCN, Vizio. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. If they are a nationally recognized uh, lender, more than likely you're dealing with directly with the lender. Uh, if it's, uh, you know, Ed and Associates Capital, then more than likely it's going to be a broker. So if you don't recognize the company, uh, there's a high chance that they will be a broker instead of a lender, but there's always the exceptions and we can go on that later. Here's probably the easiest way <laughs> to tell if somebody is a broker or a lender. If you have a broker reaching out to you and they're using a Gmail, Yahoo, or AOL, nothing against that. Please don't, please don't misread this, but more than likely they are a broker. Uh, if they're working with a lender or they are a lending company, they will have their own domain, they have their own website, and more than likely they have their own professional email account. So just understand that if they're using a free access email server, more than likely they are a broker. There's nothing wrong with that. And it's not that you should shy clear of brokers. Remember, the brokers play a lot, they provide a lot of services to you as real estate investors, but just so that you know who you're actually dealing with. If they use phrases like, let me run out the chain, let me talk to my investor, or let me talk to my supervisor, let me get back with you, let me get with our underwriting department, no matter what, more than likely, you could hear that from both sides of the uh, of the table, whether you're dealing with a broker or a lender. Um, just know that at the end of the day, even the lender has to make sure that that investment meets the investor's requirement or that loan meets the investor's requirement. So just be aware that you may hear that from both the broker and or the lender. <clears throat> so here's some advantages in dealing with brokers. A broker brokers out loans and therefore they have many different options for many different needs. A broker probably has a lot of different capital investors for the different deals that come across their desk. So if you're dealing with the broker, you more than likely will find a solution for your real estate need. They will help you build a proper loan file quickly. I cannot stress how important that is. The broker will help you build that loan file very fast. Also, the broker is going to have, uh, they will be available in times of need. So normally as real estate investors, especially if you're just getting started, you may have a nine to five, you may have other things that you're working on. So maybe the best time for you to reach out to your broker or the person who you're in contact with is in the evening time or maybe on the weekend. Well, when you're working with the broker, they're probably going to be available on a Saturday or on a Sunday afternoon, uh, late on a Thursday night. When you're dealing with a lender, maybe not so much. A broker has a very deep willingness and desire to create a personal relationship because, they, again, they want repeat business. So your broker is going to be very interested in trying to help you find a solution for your need so that, number one, they get paid. Number two, you'll come back to them and use them again. 
Also, a broker, an experienced broker, is going to be able to give you advice and recommendations to put you in the best light possible with the lenders that they know. So a broker is going to help you present your plan, present your company, present your project in such a way that the likelihood of it getting funded is very, very high. Here are some advantages of working with the lender. They can be the decision maker. Therefore, you're going to know right off the bat, there's not going to be this unknown uh, time where you don't know if you're going to get funded or not. They have a significant capital base. This means that they have a lot of money to loan out. Uh, the likelihood that a lender runs out of funding uh, will be very, very slim, though there are the exceptions. They are professional. They have systems and processes in place. They want to make sure that you're successful because when you are successful, they are going to be successful. Uh, they will also be looking to build long-term relationships, and they're going to be doing this by maybe offering you discounts for repeat business. Maybe they will allow you access to some of their uh, softwares and some of the ways that they look at deals so that it helps you streamline your decision-making process on whether you're going to get a deal or not. And also a lender is invested in the deal all the way from lead until you pay it back. So remember with the broker, once you buy the property and you've gone to close and that property is now yours, that broker is no longer part of that property. So maybe you've had that experience, you close on a property and all of a sudden there's been an issue. You reach out to your broker for some advice and they're saying, hey, listen, that's it's no longer my hands. You need to, you need to talk to so-and-so. Well, when you deal directly with the lender, they're in it with you all the way from beginning to the very end. So there is a consistent point of contact there. Also know that a lender has many different tools to help you analyze your project and project risk on your deals. So they're going to help you guide. Uh, they're going to help you make better decisions and really keep you in line with what they need. So these are some of the benefits of working with a broker and lender. So this has been Edwin Apperson. I appreciate the time that you've taken to watch this. This has been Brokers versus Lenders. I hope this has been educational. If you want, you can reach out to us. You can follow us on Facebook at Blue Bay Capital, Florida. You can also reach out and find me on LinkedIn. And you can visit us on our website at bbcfunding.com. If there is a topic topic of conversation that you'd like me to dive into, to go over, uh, to present on, then please reach out. Let me know what your idea is and we will get it in the, in the, in the lineup for upcoming uh, topics of conversation. So then we can hopefully answer your question as well as other people who may have a similar question as well. Thank you. Have a great rest of your week. <music>